In this short video, I'm going to talk about a specific water resources engineering structure called weir that is used very commonly in different open channels. Weirs are wall-like structures that are used to control water level, also to divert flow, and also measure flow rates and discharge in different open channels. If the discharge is constant in a given open channel, when you install a weir, that generally increases the upstream flow depth. And also, it leaves the downstream depth unaffected. First of all, I'm gonna show you the plan view. This is the open channel that I have, and I'm looking at it from above, right? And the flow is in this direction, and this is Q. There is no weir over here, so the flow is, the discharge, the water is flowing freely in this open channel. When I install a weir right across this channel, water is going to change course, right? How does it do that? Let me actually show you. So I'm going to show you the cross-sectional view or side view over here. This is the bed of the channel. And this is the depth of water. Flow is in this direction. And by the way, when you have the weir over here, upstream is this section. This is upstream. And after weir, you have your downstream. Okay. So this is water moving in this direction. And then you install a weir, let's say, right over here. And this is a weir, a wall-like structure. Okay. What happens when you do that? So when you do that, you're not going to initially have any water over here, right? But the depth of water is going to increase. The depth of water was initially here. This depth is going to increase until water can pass over the weir, right? So depth is going to increase slowly, going higher and higher and higher until the water can go past the weir, right? And there's going to be this shape of water jumping, essentially jumping over your weir, and this over here, we call this part of the flow, flow nap, N-A-P-P-E, flow nap. Um, before talking about the discharge and how to measure that, let me tell you different shapes and different types of weir. So we have rectangular weirs, and also we have triangular weirs, and they are called V-notch weirs. We have two different types of weirs. Type number one is sharp-crested weir. They're called sharp-crested weir because if I want to show you a cross-sectional cross -sectional of sharp-crested weir, you can see the tip of it, the crest of it is sharp. So this is called a sharp-crested weir. And the other type is broad-crested weir. As its name suggests, the top of it, the crest of it is broader. Right over here. Perfect. So there are different uses for sharp-crested weirs and broad-crested weirs. For example, sharp-crested weirs are usually made of thin plastic or metal plates, and they are used in smaller channels to measure the flow rate. To calculate the discharge of water over a sharp crested weir for a rectangular weir. The equation is something like this. All right, CD over here is discharge coefficient. This discharge coefficient varies based on the type of weir that you are considering. This equation is for a sharp crested rectangular uh, weir. Uh, G for SI is 9.81. B is the opening, the width of the opening of the weir, and H is the depth of water ov over the weir. Let me show you that over here. Show you another one to make it a little bit more clear. And this is a weir, sharp crested rectangular weir over here. I want to show you where capital H is. And this is NAP. Water level. Okay, so H K 
capital H is the depth of water over the weir. I'm not going to measure it over here though. Why? Because look at the surface of water. It's curved, right? So I'm going to go back until the surface of water is horizontal and then measure capital H right over here. So this is capital H and B again is the width of the opening of the weir. So if I have these two numbers and I have CD based on different equations and different charts for different types of weirs, I can calculate the flow of water that goes over the weir. What I want you to do is right now, think about this equation and think about where this equation is coming from. Which governing equation in fluid mechanics and water resources engineering I have used to derive this equation, right? And can we do the same thing for triangular weirs or other types of weirs or not? Um, leave a comment and let me know which governing equation I have used to derive this equation.